and he's now clarifying his remarks about the temporary ban on allowing Muslims into this country uh, and not backing down at all. He had a lengthy interview, challenging interview from our colleague from CNN, Don Lemon. Here's part of that. So you have been saying that until we figure out what's going on, what exactly does that mean? Figure out what? What is there to figure out? Why is there such hatred and such viciousness? Why is somebody willing to fly airplanes into the World Trade Center and go after it even prior to that? They failed, although they did tremendous damage by any normal standard. And then after they failed, they went and they actually took airplanes into the World Trade Center. Where does this hatred come from? Why does it come? We have have to figure it out. And we'll hear more from Donald Trump in just a moment. Uh, he may be one of the more polarizing presidential candidates in a long time. On one side, people are upset, they're appalled uh, what Donald Trump is saying. Muhammad Ali shared this statement. Uh, the boxing legend titled his statement regarding presidential candidates proposing to ban Muslim immigration. And he said this, I believe that our political leaders should use their position to bring understanding about the religion of Islam and clarify that these misguided murderers have perverted people's views on what Islam really is. I am a Muslim and there is nothing Islamic about killing innocent people. Now on the other side, people relate strongly to this meme. Uh, people are sharing it. it, says the silent majority will be silent no more. The undercurrent of that is that Donald Trump is saying what everybody's thinking. He's the common sense truth teller and in many ways it's a backlash on political correctness and he may be winning at least on the Republican side right now because of that. We hear from more from Donald Trump and we're here from Two sides. Joining us once again, Sirius XM talk show host Pete Dominic, not the big Donald Trump fan, we can say that, and Trump supporter Gina Loudon here as well. Uh, now, I know you guys are going to brawl a little bit, but stick and move so we can get in a little bit more Trump. Uh, those are the ground rules. That's it. I know you guys are going to be passionate about this. Gina, let me start with you. After his comments, are you concerned that there's going to be backlashes? We, we haven't seen a poll yet, let's just say that, but what are your thoughts on that? Uh, well, actually, there was a poll this morning that came out, and his numbers have, uh, just as many of us predicted, gone up to about 35 percent now in the Republican primary. So uh, it, it, it's, it's predictable to me because I think Americans are more concerned about national security than they are about political correctness. And until the rest of the politicians catch on, uh, their numbers are going to keep declining, I'm afraid. Pete, do you think there'll be any numbers dip? And again, I haven't seen the poll. I just did a search, so that's one that I missed. We're still waiting for that large, you know, sampling of polls. But your thoughts on after what he said? Mike, I could care less about polls, especially this far away. But if, you know, if Gina's concerned and if Americans, like she said, they are concerned about about the threats. I mean, we should obviously put, uh, look at the, the, the threats that are, are far more frequent. And they come from anti-government, white nationalists, white supremacists, the same people who are now welcoming Donald Trump as their savior. But, you know, it's not political correctness the way that Bush talked, the way Obama and Clinton talk. It's not. You can't find anybody. And I have mine on the show all the time. You can't find anybody in the counterterrorism community that thinks these ideas, these policies and this rhetoric is effective because the most important thing you can do from the NYPD counterterror all the way to the CIA is to build trust, build relationships with Muslim Americans so they can work together to weed out the extremists. Counterterrorism officials unanimously agree on that idea. Okay. Well, my producer, Donald Trump doesn't listen to them, though. Okay. And my producer just got my ear saying that poll, I believe, was mostly before the comments. But we'll, we'll, okay. we're going to continue to monitor that. Let's listen to a little bit more of Donald Trump. The question from Don Lemon was, well, how are you going to enforce something like this? And he turns it to, we've got to do something, basically. Let's listen to that. We'll get Gene and Pete's take coming out. How would you put this policy into action? What do you do, ask someone coming over no, on an airplane? Not Don't you, you know, think they, they would they, just lie? They and do that. You have to go through a series of questions. You have to go through a series of, you need paperwork. You have to find out where these people are coming from. But we can't allow radical killers into this country. We cannot continue to allow this to happen to our country. We're not gonna have a country. We're not gonna have a country left. Pete, that language for some is resonating. Well, it is, you're right. The disaffected white uh, voters are, are, it's resonated with them. They're terrified, I, I, I hear it. But this, remember who it's coming from. We always gotta remind you, this guy is the leading conspiracy theorist he, in America. I mean, he believes vaccines cause autism. Climate change was created by the Chinese and the president of the United States isn't an American. Last week, he appeared on the most popular conspiracy theorist radio show, a guy who says San Bernardino and Newtown shootings were false flags. This guy doesn't believe what experts are telling him. He trusts his instincts, and his instincts we now know are welcomed by white supremacists. Gina, give a rebuttal, then we want to hear from Donald one more time. Go ahead. 
Yeah, I find it really interesting that the guy who's talking about uh, race the most is accusing everyone else of being racist. I don't think this has anything to do with race. This has to do with 3,000 people died on September 11, 2001. And since then, we have more than 1,000 active investigations going on in this country on radical Islamic terrorists. And none of them, I might add, we're San Bernardino. Something is terribly wrong. He's saying put a pause on it until we can stop the bleeding. This is triage to our national security. You guys caught me. I was signaling, let's go to soundbite number four because it talks to, we uncovered it. We, we like to do that. We're pulling back the curtain here. Number four, soundbite number four for us talks about Donald Trump and the language that he's the underdog. Listen to this as he's talking about why he didn't win Time Magazine Person of the Year. It's really interesting. And again, I think it's language that resonates with a lot of people. Let's give it a listen. I know how the establishment works. I should have won the Emmy with The Apprentice many, many times. I was nominated many times. I should have won the Emmy. I said, no, no, I'm not Hollywood establishment. You see, I know how the world works. All right, there. real quick from both you guys, just jab, stick and move. Pete, I mean, the, the undercurrent of that is I'm like you, America. They, they discount us, we're underdogs. When I win, we'll all have our day. Your thoughts? Uh, it's just not true. It just couldn't be further from the truth. Gina and Donald Trump are speaking for white, disaffected voters that feel like the country is changing, leaving them behind. Barack Hussein Obama is the threat. The Muslim Islam is the threat. They're looking for somebody to point immigrants to the threat. Refugees are the threat. This guy doesn't even apparently understand his own business. Muslims are running from the Trump brand. On the front page of the New York Times Business Day section this morning, they hate Trump all of a sudden overnight. He did a lot of business in Dubai. He should be worried about that based on what Let's he said. Get, Gina, but, but it's that language that people like, right? No, apparently, Wait, not apparently that language, the language who, of his soundbite. Apparently it's you who, not you, but apparently it's Pete who doesn't understand uh, what's in the heart of Americans. He has garnered more black, Hispanic, and other than white support than any uh, presidential candidate in this in this election. And so and, and I have to say, I haven't endorsed in this race yet, but I will tell you that I think he has a right to be running, that I think the people who have endorsed and are supporting him have a right to have a voice in this process. Can't. And that I think the American people deserve to hear from all sides without every resource from every establishment Mike, Democrat and, Mike, and, and Republican. Guys, we got to run. PC. Pete and Gina, thanks so much. Spirited, we knew it would be. We'll have you guys back. A couple <laughs> things we're keeping an eye on, the polls, and also how are the other candidates going to come at Donald Trump next Tuesday at the CNN debate. Guys, thanks so much. Melissa. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. They had a lot to say. Now, on to some other news. That